السلام عليكم يا كريم وليزا وعليكم السلام ميم هاو ار يو الحمد لله I'm fine how are you فاين ميم this is the new course communication skills for business all right in total we are having five learning outcomes for this specific course and subject as well in this we are having assessment criteria merit part as well and the distinction as well right underneath we are having the indicative content until now you guys must be well aware of it that you have to jot down the answers according to the indicative content plus suggested evidence first and then if you want to add the extra information it's up to you um are the steps clear to you people yes ma'am okay thank you so in today's lecture we will be discussing understand how the internal communication takes place within the organization so because the subject is all about the communication skills around the business or around that is the corporate sector organization we will be discussing how it is goes through in the corporate sector inside the industries inside the organization explain the process of internal communication within the organization we will be discussing this as well in all together and in the end we will be discussing assess the appropriate use of different internal modes of communication for different purposes definitely when we have to commute with the people within the employees there are going to be different modes certain techniques through which we do that so we will be covering that as well apart from this you have to focus on the command verb as well that is explain and assess and i'm sure you all three are having the command verb document with you people when you do the assignments yes ma'am okay general communication within the organization is a multifaceted process involving the exchange of information ideas and messaging among the individuals or the groups within the organizational boundaries so first of all we will be discussing that what actually the internal communication is the exchange of information knowledge the way we are talking at the moment even we are doing internal communication because we are the part of the hnit and ath that's and we are discussing thoughts ideas and that is a kind of messages as well a two way communication you guys give me feedback as well effective internal communication is crucial for fostering a positive workplace culture aligning employees within the organizational goals and ensuring the smooth functioning of various departments when there is a clear and a smoother part as in internal communication then there are less chances of errors and risk because we are communicating with each other everything is going on smoothly if there is some absorption or any disruption as well then what will happen it will affect the projects working as well and overall efficiency of the business here is an understanding of how internal communication takes place the first is the formal communication channels now there are certain criteria under the formal communication channels which come under this these are the downward upward and horizontal communication channels in downward communication what this means from the a uh, higher level authority that is from the board of directors to the ceo we are going to talk to the lower levels that is messages flow from the higher levels of management to the lower levels conveying the directives policies and organizational updates upward means the vice versa of the first one that is employee shares the feedback suggestions and information with higher management enabling a bottom up flow of ideas and concerns they are not going to directly talk with the board of directors they are going to talk about their mds and senior mds in the organization because no matter what the lower levels they cannot directly talk to the heads then horizontal communication occurs between individuals or the units at the same hierarchical level fostering the collaboration and coordination that is among the departments your when you talk with the peer colleagues that is what we are discussing something as in horizontal communication then we have informal communication channels in this we have grape wine communication and water cooler conservations the first one is the grape wine unofficial informal channels where the information spreads through conservations rumors and social interactions among employees the way literally when ladies gather in any of the meeting or any gathering function things goes on and on we don't know about a person in reality but we are just um admitting whatever the other person is saying about that third person that is what the grapevine communication is 
water cooler. Informal discussions that take place in the common areas, providing opportunities for the spontaneous communication and relationship building. That is, we are not directly talking formally. We are just talking in general, but it will be benefited for the organization, for the peer colleagues. Written communication. Emails, memorandum, newsletter, these are way too general. Um, emails are, till now, till this date, we rely on emails because this is the most authentic way and you can say most official and formal way to commute with any organization or even any official as well. Memorandum, what are these? These are the internal documents used to convey official information within the organization. They are mostly used in our schools and colleges as well. They used to stick a paper on the board and we could read it. Otherwise, even in the end of the school times, I remember my time, they used to spread uh, and uh, share those small piece of papers through which we used to get the information. Because at that time, there was very less uh, tech innovation in the schools, in the industries. Newsletters. Regular publications sharing the organizational news achievements and updates. What basically this helps us to know that what our organization is doing for the employees and overall as well, because it is useful for the investors, for the shareholders as well. They get to know the financial ability of the organization, where it stands in the marketplace, in the industry. Only then they can risk their money. Then we have meetings and conferences. Meetings, all hand meetings, video conferences. Regular gatherings where the team member discuss projects, share updates, and the address challenges the way we do in any organization, even in the schools and colleges. All hands meeting. Large scale meetings involving the entire organization, often led by the top executive to share strategic updates. Uh, this could be an AGM as well, like an annual general meeting, which is held by the board of directors every year at the end of the uh, year. Why? In this way, we get to interact with the shareholders of the organization and we discuss our strategies through which we will be leading in the next year and what we are opting for the betterment for the organization, plus the employees and shareholders. Video conferences the way we do on Zoom app, Slack, uh, Google Meet, Microsoft Teams, and so on. Intranet and digital platforms. Now, what is intranet? It is not internet, it is intranet. Internal websites where employees access company resources, policies, and announcements. You guys must be having an LMS for the specific organization in which you study. That is what an intranet is. It is accessible by you, maybe by your parents, maybe uh, not maybe, and confirmed by the teachers plus the head of the organization. That is what an intranet is, and every organization do have it. Okay. Then we have feedback mechanism. Surveys and feedback forms and performance reviews. Organizations collect input from the employees to assess the job satisfaction, engagement, and suggestion for improvement. That is what survey and feedback is. We first give them the questionnaires, and then we ask about the feedbacks and or you can say recommendations, which in future they implement in the organization. We have reviews. Format discussions between employees and supervisors to provide feedback on job performance and set goals. Uh, when a new employee comes in the organization, they are not directly get familiar with everything. So the senior MDs and people who are a bit experienced, they discuss that XYZ person and, it, and their performance. And on behalf of it, they decide whether to promote him further or make him permanent or not. Then we have leadership communication. In this, we have town hall meetings and leadership blogs. Large gatherings led by top executives to communicate strategic initiatives, address concerns, and engage with employees. As well. That's what town hall meetings are. Um, the way we look at community uh, discussions, which we have after every month. Leadership blogs. Executives use blogs or written communication to share insights, vision, and updates within the entire organization, only then we get to uh, receive the newsletter. These people are responsible for it. In the end, it's the inclusion. It says effective internal communication creates a shared understanding, build a cohesive organizational culture, and enhances employee engagement. The utilization of diverse channels ensures that information is disseminated efficiently and that employees feel informed and connected within the organization. 
So this is the main purpose of the whole scenario that why we do internal communication, because in the end it helps the organization itself rather than the employees and the working commute working in it. Now we will be discussing the assessment criteria 1.1, explain the process of internal communication within the organization. So here the process starts. The first thing is the dynamic process. Communication within the organization is dynamic, that is diverse, involving a continuous exchange of information among individuals or groups. It is not a one-time event, but an ongoing evolving process. That is, we always urge our commute people to be dynamic, to be diverse, because only then we can uh, absorb new things and move on in the industries in the market. Center has an idea. All these points are basically the indicated content points, so no need to worry that these are quite oblivious. They are not. The process begins with an individual or group, the sender having an idea, information, or a message to communicate. For example, in a project team, a team leader identifies a new strategy for improving the project efficiency. Whenever we start anything, there is a leader for it. And that leader suggests you that we will be using this strategy to tackle any situation if we occur, if uh, there is a problem in the project or after the project. It's just like that. Then we have idea message sent. The sender encodes the idea into a message. This involves selecting the appropriate words, symbols, or media to convey the intended meaning. I'm using slides and only the words to commute with you people and my knowledge. That is how I'm sending you the message and you are encoding it by your own understanding. For example, the team later drafts an email outlining the new strategy and it is expected the benefits. Message transmitted to receiver. I'm transferring the message and you are my receiver. The encoded message is transmitted through a chosen communication channel, that is Zoom, which can include face-to-face -face conversations. We're using voice-to-voice -voice conversation at the moment, emails, phone calls, or the digital platforms. The team leader sends the email to the project team members. One thing if you can see in the assessment criteria that I have chosen one kind of example and I'm applying to each and every point. This is what is expected from you people as well. When you are explaining in the assignment, try to give, like you can pick any organization, you can pick anything and you should at least evolve that in each and every point. If even it is not asked in the suggested evidence, you should give an example. Why? Because it makes the reader and assessor knows, as in they, it depicts your uh, performance to them that you are viable enough to take that course and you did understand each and everything in day day. Okay. Okay. Receiver gets message. The message reaches the intended receiver who decodes the information to understand the sender's intended meaning. That is you people. Now you're receiving it, you're basically you're perceiving my words and you're trying to understand it. Maybe few of them, few of you um, at the moment, they are not even present in the class. They are going to see my recorded video and they are going to perceive it. And then they are going to occur with the questions and they are, will be asking me in the chat box. So that's another case as well. But it uh, perfectly fits in receiver gets message. Then we have receiver gives the feedback response to message the way you're responding me at the moment. I ask you something and you quickly answer it back. That is what you are perceiving it and giving me a reply, giving me a feedback on time. Now, this is a real life example. Another one, this says, consider a marketing team working on a new advertising campaign. Make sure it's a team and they're working on an advertising campaign. The team leader, that is the sender, has an innovative idea to incorporate user-generated content in the campaign. Because he's a leader and he's having a very unique idea, so he wants to tell you people as well. The leader drafts an email, that is a message, explaining the concept and its benefits, which is sent to the team members. The idea, the innovative idea, he has jotted down that what are the limitations and advantages of that particular, um, whatever the idea is. Upon receiving the email, the team members read and decode the information. They respond by providing the feedback expressing their opinions on the idea and suggesting ways to implement it effectively. Why the team leaders suggest 
uh, he's sending the mails to the team members because he wants to get the feedback. You people are part of that innovative thing. Any product, X, Y, Z, something else. We need your opinions. That is why we are sending the emails to you people. In this real-life scenario, the internal communication process unfolds dynamically, involving the transmission of ideas, encoding and decoding of messages, and continuous feedback to ensure a shared understanding among the team members. I hope this is clear to you, people, right? Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. thank you for replying. Okay, jumping upon assessment criteria 1.2, it says, Assess the appropriate use of different internal modes of communication for the different purposes. We will be start discussing this. Assessment of the internal modes of communication for different purposes. The first part is written communication or heading. The purposes. To provide information, the company-wide newsletters can communicate updates on the policies, achievements, and upcoming events, just like uh, Americans as well. Memorandums and newsletters are kind of same thing, but they are called different because their uh, way of communication is different. Memo is a piece of paper, newsletter is a proper newsletter. To generate team cohesion, bulletin boards can showcase the employee spotlights, fostering a sense of unity. That is, you can spotlight, you can highlight something, and it will foster a sense of unity among the employees. Appropriate use, how we can use that. Letters. Formal communication to convey the important announcements or policy changes. We should use the newsletters or the letters only then, only when when we are to convey the something important and necessary to the people. Why to waste money on the letters? Updates and newsletters regularly disseminate the information on the organizational news, achievements, and upcoming initiatives. Why? Because it boosts the uh, motivation level of the employees and the shareholders. These both are the most interested people in the organization because uh, money is associated with it. That's why. And the best motivational factor or uh, fringe benefit is the money. Face-to-face -face or the oral communication. Appraisals. One-on-one -on -one meetings for the performance assessments and feedback. Team meetings like encouraging the open discussions, brainstorming, and team building. We can ask their opinions and jot down the ideas and work on them. This will be making them like feel more important. Daily, weekly huddles and annual general meetings. Quick standard meetings or brief updates about the addressing immediate concerns. If there is a problem in the organization, we should quickly have a meeting rather than talking and discussing through emails or a video conference. It's better to hold a physical meeting. It just calms the anxiety of the people working in the organization. AGM, larger gatherings for sharing company-wide updates and strategic goals. I already discussed this, that's what AGM is. We held this annually at the end of the year to discuss with the shareholders, the share investors in the organization, and it is conducted by the board of directors. And board of director is not one, there are many. Even the shareholders, they too are the board of directors because they have the say in the organization. They have the authority to change anything with a full voting right. If they are having a vote more than 10, then we can change it. Okay, then we have electronic communication. To gain information and understanding, the intranet platforms like LMS for the employees to access company policies and resources. Everything should be updated there. What kind, any kind of resources they want, they can require, they can download from there, from the LMS. Social media channels can share employee achievements and recognize outstanding contributions, like there's, there's a company um, affiliated with them, that is the TechNest. They literally daily motivate their employees because it's a dual-based uh, organization based in Islamabad and Dubai. That is why. They always uh, want to motivate the employees by just putting the quotations and literally uh, they label their um, workers on that specific Facebook portal and Instagram portal plus Twitter because this way they get the recognizing recognizement and the leads from the LinkedIn and Indeed. That's why.
And the appropriate use of the electronic communication, again, is the email and Yammer. What's in Yammer? It's an internal social network for the informal discussions, idea sharing, and collaboration. Conferences or the whole staff meetings. Conferences facilitate brainstorming sessions and workshops for the innovation, and with this, the whole staff meetings led by the leadership to communicate strategic vision. It is very necessary as an organization to be united. They should have and like literally after every month, they should be having a meeting. They get to know what the board of directors are, their thoughts and visions are, and what the employees are actually uh, seeking. Appropriate use, again, AGM and the extraordinary general meeting. In this, what is having, uh, what we're having, the specific meetings for addressing urgent matters that require employee input. Again, not all of the employees are going to be included in this EGM. But in AGM, it's a large scale gathering. Everyone is invited. Training events and webinars. Team building activities during the training events enhance collaboration. That is why we are having workshops for the teachers, for the new colleagues, new employees in the organization. They get to know other people. They get to polish their skills and improve their resume in the meanwhile. Webinars can disseminate updates similarly to, to simultaneously to a dispersed workforce. Again, it is correct because in this way, we are discussing on board from one people to another. There is no hierarchy. Training events and webinars, hands on the workshops for the skill development and team bonding. Online sessions for remote teams to participate in interactive training. Like before teaching the people, we do have a training session first with the heads and teachers. Then we go and proceed you by giving the lectures. Now, these are the real examples of all the things, points we discussed today. First is the written communication. A company's monthly newsletter includes articles on employees' achievements, upcoming events, and a message from the CEO. Face-to-face -face oral communication. The example could be during weekly team meetings, a project manager conducts briefings to update the team on a project progress and address any challenges. Mostly a project is of six months or more than a year. What the leader or the project manager could do after two weeks, he should ask the progress on it. In this way, the team members know that they have to work. They're going to be alert. Electronic communication and organization uses its intranet to share important policy updates, ensuring that all employees have access to the latest information. Like literally now the schools and colleges, even the from the, the children who are in the kindergarten, their parents do have an LMS for those children. Why? Because in this way, they get the latest news. Even their daily homeworks, and in my time, we used to write a diary. But now they just uh, send the information on the internet portal and they get through the SMS, the parents. Then we have conferences. The company hosts an annual conference where the employees from different departments uh, gather to discuss strategies, share best practices, and foster a sense of belonging. And this is the main purpose why we are holding that meeting, just to get the ideas how we can improve things. Training events. A global organization conducts webinars to provide training on new software for all employees, ensuring consistent learning across the locations. No matter where you're localized, we are going to have a training webinar uh, and we are going to discuss each and everything according to the organization's requirement. And in the end, that's the conclusion. This assessment demonstrates that selecting the appropriate mode of communication aligns with the purpose of the message, considering the factors such as formality, immediacy, and the need for interaction. That's it. Uh, did you understand the assessment criteria 1.2 well? These are the references through which you guys can even take help, plus uh, the lecture is made from these references.